Hello friends, uh, good evening. We want to thank the Lord who has been with us and has led us this far. May his name be glorified. It is uh, so nice that we can still talk together and we want to thank the Lord who has led us this far. Uh, we are not so worthy and uh, we are not more righteous than the rest, especially those who have died. But we need to know that it is by God's grace and his mercies that we are still living. In Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22, it says that it is through the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. And today, we have another chance to be together. I want to thank the colleagues who make this provision, <laughs> who make this organization, that we can interact together. And allow me to thank Brother China Mayor Kohot for the great work he does, so that we can interact uh, even when we are not together. We want to thank the Lord for the wisdom he has bestowed unto him. And the rest of the team that make sure that this uh, happens so that we can share God's word together. In the team behind we have Brother Jacob Chibore. He makes the organizations of the places. And also our Leaders, we have uh, brother Wonasolo Eric, Eric, <laughs> who is here with us, and is always there in the organizations. Not forgetting our president, uh, who is also with us in the organizations. Now today, we want to look at something important. And I uh, request that we all think about this. Well, it will not be for a very long time, but it is very important. And uh, we are going to go to the book of Ruth, chapter 1. We shall just uh, think about verse 1, 2, and... Uh, three, four, and five, and then we shall relate this story to also some story in the book of Matthew, chapter 8, verse 24 to 27, and let us begin it with a prayer. We want to thank you, Lord, for being with us and being our guide. Thank you for the provision you've put for us to always interact want to thank you for all of the provisions you've made unto us, especially in these hard times. Now, Lord, we request you to be with us, and as we learn, we request that you come and be with us. You be our teacher. It is our humble prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> yes, uh, before we begin... I want to remind us that God is faithful to the end. He has kept us and he will keep us to the end. Have the hope that we shall surely have a chance to meet together again physically and enjoy those moments of happiness. And above all, God will be faithful till he gives us eternal life in the end. Now today, we are looking at Elimelech and the family. And uh, the title of our message is Stay, Don't Go. Stay, Don't Go. That is uh, our title of the message today. Now we are going to read Ruth chapter 1, and we shall read from verse 1 to verse 5. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled, 
that there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to dwell in the country of Moab. He and his wife and his two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech. The name of his wife was Naomi. And the names of his two sons were Maron and Chilion, Ephrathites of Bethlehem, Judah. And they went to the country of Moab and remained there. Then Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left and her two sons. Now they took wives of the women of Moab. The name of the one was Opa, and the name of the other Ruth. And they dwelt there about ten years. Then both Maron and the children also died. So the woman survived her two sons and her husband. The story we see is of a man called Elimelech. Elimelech is a Hebrew word, or it is a Hebrew name, which means God is the king, or Yahweh is the king. Now, Elimelech and his family, we are told they are living in Bethlehem. Bethlehem is also another Hebrew word, which means a house of bread. We can say it was a place of food. <laughs> yeah, because bread is commonly used as a terminology for, for food. So, Elimelech is in the house of bread. But then, a calamity falls and there is famine. And what is the decision? To leave Bethlehem and go to, to Moab. Now the history of Moab is not a good one. And uh, those who have read the Bible, you know the origins of the land of Moab. It was not out of a good background. Now, Elimelech makes a decision to leave this land of Bethlehem and go to the land of Moab. In other words, we can say Elimelech is leaving a place where God is and is going to a place where there is no God, where there is another king who is not God. He's leaving a place where God is the king and is going to a place where there is another king who is not, who is not God. And all that is being done in the name of their being famine. Now the question is, was Elimelech the only one in Bethlehem? No. There were other many people in Bethlehem. But for him, he made this decision to leave Bethlehem and to go to Moab because there is famine. Brothers and sisters, there is always a crisis. Wherever we are, we face many crises and we are also now in a time of a crisis. This was a crisis that these people faced and their crisis was famine. Our crisis now is the coronavirus disease. And uh, that COVID-19, with it comes so many other crises. There is loss of jobs. There is uh, leaving school. There is not having what to eat. There is uh, not going to church to worship. There is no movement, no transport. All those are crises that are coming with COVID-19. Now, the question is, amidst those crises, what decision do you make? 
Is it a decision to live where you were, where God had placed you, and you leave that stand with God? You go saying, let me go to another place. Maybe I can find some salvation there. Yes, in Elimelech's mind, he thought there was more food in Moab. Uh, there was good life in Moab. There were good people in Moab. And he thought he was going to survive in Moab. Likewise, you may also leave God. You say, I'm suffering because maybe this God is not good. I think I need to do something and leave this place God has placed me alone. You may have known the truth and you are in the right place. God knows you. He knows what you are going through. But for you, you say, no, I think I'm in a wrong place. I need to shift. There is some other God who can provide somewhere. I hear people saying that so and so has some, some way he does. Let me also go there and see what I can get from there. Most people think that following God is a burden. They think that those who follow God are carrying very heavy yokes upon themselves. When they see you, they say, oh brother, that one is living a miserable life. And they always bring proposals to you. Why don't you live that life? Come and enjoy life in its abundance, in its, full, in its fullness. My brother, my sister, the fullness of life is in Jesus Christ alone. Yes, you may go there, but it will end in tears, like they normally say nowadays. <laughs> now, Elimelech and his family, they moved from Bethlehem, a house of bread, and they went to Moab. A land which is established on some nasty backgrounds. Now, when they reach there, Elimelech dies. Eh, so bad. When he has left a place where God placed him, Elimelech has done what? He has died. A place where he thought he was going to enjoy. A place where he thought there was too much food for him and the family. A place where I thought there was peace and peace in its abundance. Elimelech dies in Moab. Brothers and sisters, it may be that you decide to leave God, to leave that place God has put you in, and you go to look for peace outside, but when you reach there, the devil is waiting for you. He says, ah, this is the chance. This man has come out. Hit him now. Before he goes, before he goes back. Yes, there are many of our people, many of our friends, who have left God, they move out, they say, Ah, this side, there is a lot of peace. You who stayed there, you are going to languish in poverty. You are going to languish with famine. You are going to languish with your prison-like life. For us, we are enjoying. But it will not take long. You may die from more. The news I have today is that even when there seems to be famine in Bethlehem, the house of bread, God will provide when you stay. God will not allow you to languish. God will not allow you to die. Just stay in Bethlehem. 
stay where God has placed you. Don't say, hey, life seems not to be good here. Let me go and find out some life outside there. Yes, there may be many things to lure you. They may tell you, ah, man, this side, things are very nice. For well, you are in your prison, eh? Okay, stay there. But when you reach there, the devil is waiting for you. That is the only chance he has got, and he will kill you from there. He will torment you from there. And if it is not by God's grace, you may die from, from there. It was too bad for Elimelech that he died from Moab. And this one was not enough warning to the rest of the family. They said, well, death is normal. We can stay. <laughs> the son is married. Some ladies from Moab. And we see that for even them, after some time, they died. After like 10 years, they also died. Yes, brothers and sisters, when you have known that we are in the wrong, don't stay. Don't make things seem to be normal. Don't make things to seem to be usual. Say, well, uh, I ran out. people say I ran away from God. I had this challenge, but all people have those challenges. Let me stay. It is normal. No, it is not normal. Make a comeback to Christ. Elimelech has died. The sons have died. And all this is because they have left where God placed them. They have left a place where God is dwelling. They have left a place where God has chosen for them to, to be. And for them, they are now choosing for themselves a place to be, a place to dwell, and they are getting very many calamities. Brothers and sisters, we will always get very many problems if we want to dwell where God has not designated for us to, to dwell. When we want to be where God does not desire us to, to be. When we decide to take a way that God does not like us to take. Why? Because we have left God's will and we are riding on our own will. When we think we are more wise than God. When we think we need to make our own ways because what God is giving us is confining us. We will always have many troubles and we will always be in tears. Now, this lady, Naomi, we thank God that at last <laughs> she came back to her senses and said, no, I need to go back. I need to go back to Bethlehem. And why did she make this decision? It is because she was told that, ah, God visited his people in that mm -hmm. land. When you read verse 6, then she arose with her daughters-in-law and she that she might return from the country of Moab. She has made a decision to leave Moab. For she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had visited his people by giving them bread. <laughs> yes, now she hears the house of bread has bread in abundance. And here she is languishing. The husband has died. The sons have died. And she is the only one left to die. So she says, I better go back to Bethlehem. 
And uh, what we see here is that the Lord had visited his people in Bethlehem. God had kept his provisions in Bethlehem. The people who remained in Bethlehem, for them they had the bread to eat. But these people who left thinking they are going to get more bread outside, they had very many challenges and many of them died. What do we learn? We learn that God will always be with us even when things seem to be challenging. Even when things seem to be hard, God will always be with us. God will always be there when everyone else thinks that things are worse. These people, there was famine, but those who remained, God provided for them. They had enough to eat, they had life, and the people who left, well, they had very many difficulties. Instead of having food in abundance, they had foes in abundance. Instead of having what to eat, these people, they faced death. Now, we need to stay. Though we don't need to leave God's presence. Stay where God has placed you. Don't jump out. When you jump, there is death. But when you stay, there is life. God says, I have put before you life and death. You need to make a choice. When you go to Matthew 8, 24-27, there we find the story of the disciples in the boat. And there is Jesus who is sleeping. These disciples, however much things were tough, none of them jumped out of the of the boat. They would have said, ah, let us jump and swim. But their salvation was in the what? In the boat. They still knew there was Jesus in the, in the boat. Well, many when they are talking about that story, they always portray the negative picture of the disciples, of them not having faith. But today I want us to look at the positive. They did not jump out of the boat. They stayed in the boat because they knew their salvation is in the, in the boat. They knew they had Jesus in the, in the boat. Well, Jesus was asleep, but they knew any time he can wake up and save them. Yes, even us in the crisis we go through, in this crisis we are in, many people may say, let us jump out of the boat. We can swim and beat the storm. But we need to remember that our Jesus is in the boat. Don't leave the boat. Don't go. Stay in the, in the boat. Jesus will once wake up and all the storm will be silenced. And he will just say, peace be still. Don't run thinking for you when you swim you will beat the storm. You will find the storm is even worse. And you will just sink and perish. Don't be like Elimelech who ran away from Bethlehem a place of bread and went to languish in Moab, where he thought there was great providence, where he thought there was much food. And uh, we need to always also know that God's presence is the best. Where God is, that is the best place. Well, some people will tell you that is the place of misery. There is no enjoyment where God is, but where God is, 
that is the best place to dwell. That is the best place to be. We need to always seek to be at the feet of Jesus. Let us always make sure that we are where God has placed us. And we know that God is present in every situation. Let us not doubt God. Let us always have faith in the Lord, knowing that with him everything is possible. He is capable of changing every situation. He is capable of doing great things and wonders that we can never think about. What seems to be a very big thing for you, before God, it is just a dot. And he just wipes it. For you, when you see there was a big stone resting on you, to God it is just a full stop on a paper. So, we need to always wait upon the Lord. When this crisis come, we need to rest in God and trust in him that with him things will change. Don't maneuver. Don't do this and this and this and this because in the end you may make a wrong decision. You may make a wrong choice. And when you make a wrong choice, you may perish. But even when we have made the wrong choice, there is still room for us. Even when we have made a wrong choice, you can do like Naomi and you make a decision to come back to Jesus Christ, to come back to, to the Lord. And God is ready to receive you. That is the good news. Jesus is ready to receive you and me. If we have gone astray, he is there. And he will surely receive us back into his fold. So, the question is, what is your decision? If you wanted to leave, stay. Don't go. But even if, if you find yourself, you had already gone, please, turn and come back to the fold of God. Come back to where God had placed you. And the Lord will surely bless you there. May the Lord be with us as we rest upon his promises and as we trust him that there is no condition which is above him, which he cannot handle. You may be going through a tough situation, but God knows you and God will make his providence unto you so that all will come to be well with you. God has the best plan for you. You may make your own plan and you don't even consult God, but you need to know that God has the best plan for, for you, which will end in happiness, not in tears. Let's end with a prayer. We thank you, Lord, for being with us and being our guide. Thank you for your mercies upon us and for teaching us that we need to stay. We don't need to go. We don't need to leave your presence. We don't need to leave the place where you have placed us. We just need to stay and wait on you because there is no condition which is too big beyond you. There is no situation that can overtake you. There is no challenge that you cannot sail us through. Lord, may our trust and hope always be in you, that with you all things are possible. And when we are with you, we can be victors. We pray that even when the situations get tougher, may we keep in you and may our hope always be in you, that with you things will be different. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Bless you.